Hello, I'm Ross Fossler, a member of the technical staff here at Cypress Semiconductor. Welcome to Getting Started with PSOC 3. This is the first part of a two-part introductory video for engineers new to PSOC and new to PSOC 3. Although I say engineers, this video is ideal for anybody interested in knowing more about PSOC. So, if you are a hobbyist or a student, as well as an engineer interested in learning a little, then you are watching the right video. The first thing I'd like you to understand is PSOC is not a microcontroller. So let's refresh a little about what a typical MCU really is before introducing PSOC 3, although you're probably uh, quite familiar. This uh, is a pretty generic view of a classical microcontroller. A typical MCU has a CPU, an 8051 in this example, that is the central link to everything. The peripherals such as the ADC, UART, I2C, and the general I.O. all connect to the CPU. They do not connect to each other. Data passes through the CPU from the peripherals or I.O. Events are processed or managed by the CPU through, for example, interrupts or polling. The central processor pretty much does everything. Thus, the CPU is the heart of the microcontroller and really defines what the microcontroller is. Now let's compare the MCU you just saw with a programmable system on a chip, PSOC. Here's a simple view of PSOC 3. When you compare this with the MCU, you might think PSOC is heartless, meaning there is no central connecting point for everything. As you can see, PSOC has a CPU, but it is not centrally connected. Functionality is divided into subsystems. There is an analog subsystem, a digital subsystem, a processing subsystem, and a general I.O. subsystem. Each of these systems are interconnected by a complex network of signals composed of digital buses, digital signals, and analog signals. The CPU is just another resource in that system that can operate in parallel with other functions or be connected to them. What makes PSOC unique, what really defines PSOC in my view, is its high degree of programmability and its flexible network of connections between subsystems. I often consider PSOC to be a superset of the typical MCU because you can program a PSOC 3 to be a microcontroller. However, you cannot take a typical microcontroller and program it to be a PSOC. Now that we have a high-level picture and understanding of where PSOC stands, let's go a little deeper into PSOC 3. Here's a more detailed view of PSOC 3. It has many of the features of an MCU, like an ADC, I2C, timers, counters, PWMs, you may have noticed that some features appear to be missing, such as UART and SPY. And there are things shown, things that you may have not seen before in an MCU, like UDB, DFB, and the SCCT blocks. Take a look more closely at the digital subsystem. There is an array of universal digital blocks which I often refer to as UDBs. You can think of this region as an advanced set of programmable logic. As I noted before, there is no UART, but if you needed one, you could actually build it within the UDB array. In this case, however, you do not need to go this far because a UART component has already been designed and tested here at Cypress, and it is provided in PSOC Creator's component library. I will introduce you to PSOC Creator later. Besides the programmable logic, there is uh, timer blocks, CAN, I2C, and an integrated USB SIE. A more unique element is the digital filter block, or DFB, which is essentially a math coprocessor capable of performing high resolution math computations parallel to what the CPU and the UDBs can perform. Panning over to the analog subsystem, 
is a pretty diverse block. As you can see, it has a wealth of features like op amps, comparatives, and an ADC, as well as DACs. It also has, as I noted before, the SCCT blocks, switch cap continuous time blocks, which is a unique set of programmable analog where you can make a programmable gain amplifier or a mixer or other diverse analog components. In the center is a subsystem probably the most familiar to those of you who are MCU users. There is a high performance single clock cycle per instruction 8051 CPU with a complement of flash, SRAM, and EEPROM for general embedded processing. Thank you for viewing this very brief introduction to PSOC 3. I hope through this video that you gained a reasonable understanding of what a programmable system on a chip is and what is in PSOC 3. Next time, part two of the series, I'll throw out the slides and uh, I will actively develop a project for PSOC 3 and actively demonstrate the distinction uh, between PSOC 3 and an MCU. I'm going to program PSOC 3 to blink an LED with the CPU, which is a fairly typical uh, of an MCU, you know, microcontroller. And then I will add uh, to the project and blink a second LED, but uh, do it a bit differently, a little bit uh, more unique and without the, the help of the uh, CPU. I uh, hope to uh, see you in the next part. For more information about PSOC 3, you can go to www.cypress.com slash go slash PSOC 3.